Hi, everybody. My name is Martin Kavanagh. Uh, I'm a vet surgeon. I've worked in heart health consultancy uh, for the last 13, 14 years, both here and abroad. Um, this webinar is sponsored and supported by Inform Nutrition. Uh, we're looking at some, some natural products to help with flight control, but also I just want to do a little bit of a general introduction to, to flies. What are they doing? What's, what problems are they causing? Um, so first of all, if we look at what we're actually dealing with, we have a number of different species of flies. Uh, this guy, stable flies. Uh, let's not worry too much about the Latin names, but it's just interesting that he's called stomoxis, just means sharp mouth. So these are aggressive biters and bloodsuckers and can really impact on production and they really create a nuisance. Um, head flies are a little more common uh, in the sense we see these swarming. There are real, uh, what we call a vector or a cause of summer mastitis. So this is the one we're probably most familiar with. You see them all over the animal's body. Uh, they're also the, the forensic fly, the one that CIS uses to, to check out how long a body has been decomposing and so on. And they do like that decomposing tissue. So anything rotten around the farm here, they, they're, uh, they're going to breed in. Uh, face flies, real common as well. These are the ones you see around the face, the nose. They're feeding on the secretions around the eyes and the saliva and so on. Uh, and they can be a real irritant, but also uh, spreading uh, or, or contributing to uh, pink eye. Very, very important. Uh, horn flies, aggressive, aggressive biters. Huge problem in in, uh, in in some other countries, but we have them here. Um, they're they're very, very irritant. They're irritant biter and blood sucker. Other flies that we're concerned with, uh, flies that cause uh, fly strike or maggots are green and blue bottles. So these, again, they find an open wound and they lay their eggs and you get and you and you get the maggots and it creates a problem. So significant problem in sheep, uh, particularly um, uh, black flies, small little flies, see them a lot more in the autumn period. And you get these allergic reactions from their bite as they as they emit certain chemicals into in, into the skin. Very similar to midges as well. They have these uh, chemicals they put into the skin and you get this huge reaction to it. Midges as well, unfortunately, can uh, pass on Schmallenberg virus. Uh, blue tongue um, and their major cause of sweet itch in horses, which is that over over the whole horse, you get this horrible allergic reaction, very, very uncomfortable for horses. So they really cause a lot of different species and they cause significant damage uh, to animals. Come out at different times. So when we look at uh, the um, uh, when these animal uh, when these flies hatch and, and, and their peak periods, we go from April right down into October. So stable flies at, at one end in terms of the autumn time and face flies early on. And we see these early outbreaks of pink eye in calves during that, or that May, June period. So really, really keep an eye on uh, the fact that we got to start treating flies or treating for flies much earlier than we think. Um, they're nuisances. They upset the cattle, sheep, horses and the people. So just, just by just by being irritating, but they also can spread disease. And when we look at what they do, again, these face flies getting in around the secretions um, and flies finding areas of broken skin that they can reopen wounds and they can start feeding on again and start, start spreading bacteria and other diseases. So clever, adaptable species. They're vectors, so we use the term vectors in veterinary a lot as in they they, they transfer or they carry uh, something, a bacteria or a virus from one animal to another. Uh, their methodology of uh, transferring disease. So summer mastitis is our, is our big one. And that's these pus forming bacteria, the, these Truparella pyogenes. That word pyogenes, back to our Latin again, which means pus forming, uh, gets in through the damaged teeth and damaged by flies and the bacteria spread by flies. Uh, they get up there and they cause a major problem. Uh, contagious mastitis spread as well in our lactating cows. So spreading your staffs and streps the same way, damaging at teat end. Uh, pink eye very much so we relate fly damage to the eye, the cornea, as a way of the bacteria getting into that eye and causing a problem, as well as the flies potentially carrying the bacteria also. Uh, and warts, just out of interest, this is relatively new to me also, but more and more we're looking at what is the implication of flies in the spread 
of bovine papillomavirus that cause warts, uh, particularly amongst the calves, the young, young, young stock, uh, before their immune system is able to beat off the wart viruses, are we setting up warts in these calves? And are flies contributing to that? So there's some science that supports that. So certainly we need to think about it. Uh, fly strikers, we talked before about in sheep as well as pink eye. And again, sarcoids, which are these bovine papillomavirus caused warts in horses. And some infectious diseases of horses are spread by flies and also sweet itch. Okay, so very significant in farming terms of what flies do to stock. Just note on the environment, I think, be aware, we often ignore this. We complain about flies, but we don't look at what's around us. Are the dung steads too close to where the animals are? Too much effluent. Not cleaning out calf pens in the summertime, allowing this bed of manure to remain, not cleaning out hutches and so on. We get a lot of flies around the yard. Again, trees, stagnant water areas. What's very important for eye health in young stock is, um, uh, you know, non-dusty environment, but also, uh, if they don't have shade. So calves out in these open fields with no shade have too much UV light hit in their eyeball and that creates problems and, and corneal damage, much more susceptibility to getting these uh, pink eye infections. Uh, fans and parlors can help blow away flies. Uh, watch that buildup of manure and pastures or in strip grazed areas or around hedges, or around water troughs. And again, if we're using too much insecticide, are we putting the normal fauna at risk in pasture where we're not breaking down the dung. Really important for flies that they have dung to lay their eggs in, be fresh dung, stale dung, to lay their eggs in and cycle. So the quicker that dung is broken down by beetles and so on, the less flies you're going to have or the more it's scattered. So anything we do to disrupt the normal breakdown of manure and pastures is, uh, is contributing to flies. So for some rheumatitis, we all know the standard way of treating really is get them stripped out or remove that teat. It's a welfare issue, okay? Both they have the disease and also taking that teat off. Um, so we need to prevent it. And also your vet will recommend antibiotics, lots of pain relief with anti-inflammatories and fluids in those very sick cows. So you need to see them quick, pick it up quick. Uh, sealing helps. And certainly our standard insecticides, our ectoparasiticides to pour on or spot on uh, certainly helps. Stockholm tar on the other, a lot of you are familiar with, but you need to put on quite a lot. And looking at the environment, those dry cows, those in-calf heifers are in, those autumn dry cows, suckler cows that, that are getting weaned and so on. We really need to watch what environments we're, we're, we're putting them in. And often they can be on scrub areas or they are in, in, into more, um, more woody pasture. So there is a role certainly in there for using natural products like uh, garlic, because again, garlic buckets can be moved with the different groups of animals. Uh, pink eye, this is a bit of a nightmare. Uh, like it, it causes severe pain, severe pain in these animals and will reduce growth rate and will spread like wildfire. So you need antibiotic treatment for it. It is a bacteria that's causing the problem. Your vet will recommend accordingly. If you're not getting good response, certainly uh, get it swabbed and checked out. What's there? Have you got resistance? And make sure the animal's own immune system is good. Make sure they're done for IBR, positive or their good BVD status. Uh, vets will recommend various drugs, usual long-acting oxytetracyclines and fluorophenicols. But key, please, please, please give them pain relief. Really, really, really important. They're in agony with this. And I would suggest with calves to get them into shade, so severely affected calves is actually warrants, unfortunately, putting them back in under a roof to stop the UV, the UV damage. And if you're if your farm, you're very susceptible to getting pink eye. Consider calves going into a shade, a field with shade so they can get out of the direct sunlight is important. Again, our, our poor on spot ons can help. And this is again where I would see uh, quite useful moving around some uh, natural product like garlic buckets uh, with these calves. Uh, it certainly would help start to reduce the, the the volume of flies that are on them. Uh, so our old friend, the warts, just note, um, a really infectious, contagious virus. By direct contact, once animals come in contact with each other that have the wart virus. But also we're looking at studies also showing that the virus can be transmitted by flies. So by the time you see warts, game's over. You generally, you've had a lot of exposure. They only come a couple of months after the initial exposure to the virus. So we need to be treating early and managing these animals early, early on in the season. 
lots of remedies work. Um, all warts go away eventually. Animal's immune system kicks in. Um, so pretty much everything works. So I'm not going to pick a favorite treatment. You all have your treatments that you're fond of. Some of you use vaccines, various ways of doing it. I really don't mind because ultimately everything will work in the end of, in the end of the day. And you've kind of got, got to get through the nightmare with that heifer calving in and try and get as much warts off her as possible. So think about prevention. You're, make sure your calves are not immunosuppressed out there in that first grazing season and that you're, you're dealing with flight control in that first grazing season. Don't allow your calves to start picking up these wart viruses, which is very, very important. Uh, just, just a quick note, midges on, on, on horses in particular, and also look, they are vectors of these other diseases. Um, but definitely there is a case for regular and frequent uh, fly and midge therapy in horses. A couple of products available. Uh, just note, and again, this is a really busy, I'm not expecting everyone to read the slide. I just really want to make one big point about it. We have all these products from A right down here to Z. These are all our spot-ons and pour-ons and fly tags we use in Ireland that are licensed. They're all from the one family, py pyrethroids different versions of them, okay? All ending there in methrin. But if we're going to start getting resistance in our fly populations, which more than likely exists, because we often will give a sub-lethal dose of this, we're not going to kill every fly. So resistant flies live. Um, we're going to run out of road here at some point. We're just going to have, we won't be able to use these for treatment in the future. We can use ivermectins. They're licensed against horn flies. Um, how effective they are in other fly populations, I actually don't know the answer to that. So often th these products are used in combination. So just be aware, we may have issues in the future with resistance. We've got to use them probably more frequently than the label suggests every two weeks, every three weeks. Environmental effects. Remember, these insecticides are killing lots of other bugs that we don't know about, and that might come back to bite us in the future when, when we've poor control of insects for other diseases or we have imbalance in our natural fauna. Um, alternatives, I think you need lots of different practices to manage flies. It's not just one. I'm not going to say one thing is better than another. I think you need numerous ones. But I think what's really, really important here is that you need early prevention. OK, you start early as soon as temperatures are moving, certainly April, May. Sort out your environment, clean the place up, stock them tar. Uh, it's weekly, it's hassle, large numbers, I wouldn't expect you to do it. Uh, there's ways of managing biologically, we, we, we can put in populations of parasitic flies. Not done in Ireland, I think at the moment, I'd be interested to hear if any of you have any experience with it, but I certainly know it's done in the UK and Europe. Uh, mechanical fly traps not used here, they're used, used abroad where animals pass through an area where flies are trapped. And again, cow brushes that with insecticide uh, included in them. Again, probably not practical and certainly won't want to influence flies on the legs. So we do have these alternatives like these natural products, the garlic garlic type uh, products that can be used pretty safely. How, do, uh, how does garlic work? Um, the compounds in garlic can convert it into uh, a repellent allicin. When the animal eats garlic, effectively it sweats back out that, uh, re that uh, repellent and flies don't like it and they stay away. That's basically it. So flies are repelled by the smell they don't land on the animals. And just an interesting study that was done in animals abroad about a 50% reduction in fly numbers on grazing cattle. So that's, that's pretty good. And it would match up with quite a lot of the other things that we actually do. We're never going to eliminate flies. We're never going to get rid of them all, but, we'll, but we want to reduce fly pressure, which is very important. Um, I think if you're going to use something like um, a natural products, what's very important with these products is you use them correctly. And I think refer to if you're in doubt about the uh using the uh contact uh, contact inform to give you good advice on this because a lot of these products will fail if they're not used correctly so place you know uh buckets around where areas where animals gather water trucks resting areas and so on and even the smell alone off the buckets will 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 help uh repel what I, I quite like about some of these particularly for young calves and that is that they, they there's dual purpose to these buckets we can get some additional vitamins, minerals, B1s, B12s, trace elements into animals at grass if they're lacking in pasture. Uh, I think that can be 
can, uh, can be quite useful. So not alone are you getting the fly benefit, you're getting that extra benefit of mineral uh, mineral support and our health support at grazing, um, which is something we like to do, particularly in our in our reseeded grass. Um, just be cautious, you can get garlic taint in milk and meat, so not not suitable for lactating animals and animals that are just getting close to finishing within about two weeks of slaughter or so on. And again, check with your vet if you're going to use it with horses, just check if, you, if you've if you got uh, competing horses that they're happy for you to use something uh, like this. It's not going to interfere with any testing or so on for any of the anti-inflammatories or, or any, any drugs that they'll be testing for in the routine. Uh, uh, competitions. So practical use, make sure you know how to use them, you're using enough of them. Um, and again, there's a, a dual purpose benefit to them. Okay, so look, that's a uh, that's a quick run around fly management as such. Thank you for listening to it. And hopefully we'll catch up again at, uh, at some point. If you need some more information, there's a QR code on your screen, tap your phone to it, and uh, you can make contact with Informa. They can give you a bit of advice on the use of natural products. So thank you again.